Sergey. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Sergey, and today I'm, present uh, I'm presenting joint work with Philip, John, uh, John, and Lars on the essence of uh, generalized algebraic data types. So, firstly, let's quickly recap um, uh, what the GDTs are and what they're useful for. So, uh, in in a nutshell, they allow us to uh, to uh, to show stronger type invariants. So, for example, using JDTs, we can express um, vectors with fixed length without usage of dependent types. And the way we do that, in some Haskellish uh, uh, syntax, we can encode two data types: uh, zero that uh, is just ground type without constructors, and successor that takes a type and returns a type and also does not have any um, constructors. Uh, after that, we can vary indices of another type to have more uh, guarantees about uh, programs uh, using this type. So for example, here we can encode a data type of um, vectors of natural numbers. And the way we do that, we have two constructors, one that uh, says that we always can return a vector of zero length, and another one uh, that says that uh, given an initial number, uh, a vector of length n, we can uh, use um, our uh, successor that constructor to return um, a vector of um, a bigger uh, size. So here we um, use um, uh, types as indices and it gives us an intuition that probably we will need to reason about um, equalities of those indices, so equalities of types. Uh, so the way we approach the problem uh, was uh, uh, two-staged. We uh, firstly came up with um, a calculus which is empirically good enough to express JDTs, um, uh, and after that we tried to um, contract semantical models for this calculus. So let's start with um, uh, the, the calculus. Um, it's an extension of uh, system of Amiga with recursive types, uh, equalities, and interest in equalities, which we uh, called um, injectivity rules for, for types. Um, and um, um, Given this calculus, we constructed two models, one to reason about semantical type safety and another one to reason about interest in binary properties, for example, representation and dependence, um, or to, to prove some free theorems for the calculus. Um, so um, here um, um, you, you can see syntax at the type and kind level. So uh, it's system of Amiga with uh, three additional uh, gadgets. Let's start with constraints. Uh, so constraints express an equality in between uh, two types, uh, both well-kinded at the uh, uh, kind uh, kappa. Uh, and we have two additional types. Um, we, we, uh, we have <coughs> uh, chi arrow tau and chi uh, times tau. And infor uh, like informally, they express assumption on some equality and assertion of some equality. And we can use them to encode most of the JDTs. Um, we also extend our term uh, um, level language accordingly. Uh, so you can see here that we use DOS to represent constraints because they can be considered uh, proof irrelevant proofs of uh, given equalities. So at the level of syntax, we use uh, these introduction and elimination forms only to drive uh, the type, uh, type, uh, type checker. Um, <coughs> and they do not have any uh, interesting um, dynamics and semantics. And moreover, we extend our, our calculus with one additional gadget, um, a, a, a board that allows us to eliminate impossible equalities. So for example, if we pattern match on GDT and arrive to some case which is impossible given uh, certain indices um, you know, for this GDT, we can eliminate this case and uh, proceed. Uh, yeah, and let's uh, switch to the uh, uh, statical semantic of our language. So, to extend type system, we need to also define two additional <coughs> uh, judgments. Um, the first judgments are uh, probability rules that allows us to prove equalities of types, and they include uh, uh, beta and eta rules for types, since we work in an extension of system of um, Amiga congruence rules, and more importantly, they contain injectivity rules. So the generic, uh, the generic rule of injectivity is presented over here, and what it says, if, if we have two uh, applications 
of um, different types to the same constructor, and we know that uh, those two applications are equal, we also can derive uh, equality of the correspondent components. Uh, and for example, if we instantiate C with um, a product, um, we can derive equality in between two co components of uh, the product type uh, given equality of the whole product. Uh, the second judgments, uh, class of judgments is um, discriminability judgments that allows us to show that some equalities are impossible to hold. So, for example, uh, if we look at two applications uh, of sequences of types to some different constructors, we know that uh, they cannot be equal. So, for example, if we have an application to type sum and type product, uh, then we know that uh, uh, those uh, two applications uh, um, cannot be possibly equalized. Uh, and to use those two judgments, um, we extend our static semantic with uh, a, a rule for a board that allows us to remove um, uh, impossible cases if we arrive at a contradiction. Uh, we also extend uh, typing rules for introduction and elimination forms for our constraint types, but they're mostly uh, what we expect to see, so they're, they're not so interesting. Um, and now let's argue that uh, the calculus is expressive enough to represent JDTs. So getting back to our original example of uh, vectors of natural numbers, we can say that um, our vector of natural numbers is um, uh, a type function, uh, which is encoded as a recursive uh, function with one index. And if um, this index is void, which we use uh, as an encoding of uh, uh, zero from the original example, then um, uh, we are done. We don't need to provide any uh, information. And the second constructor says that if we have a natural number, uh, a vector of length beta, uh, we can return a new vector of length uh, beta plus one. Uh, and uh, this way we can encode uh, GTTs by reasoning about the uh, equalities of their indices. Um, so our original goal was to uh, take this calculus, uh, construct a syntactic uh, model for this calculus to verify that uh, it is uh, well behaved, and after that, try to construct a semantical model to prove um, interesting properties about uh, about it. Um, and uh, usually, uh, when we construct semantical models, we are interested in uh, fixing some universe of uh, semantic relations and uh, using it to uh, reason about uh, problems semantically. Uh, but if we uh, try to pursue uh, the most straightforward and uh, 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 the most straightforward approach and interpret our types as uh, sets of values, we quickly arrive to some problems. So, for example, consider inter interpretation of uh, types as, as sets and type equalities as uh, equalities of given sets. Uh, in this case, we cannot uh, validate the um, injectivity rules. So, for example, if given this instance um, of uh, an injectivity rule that says that uh, we can derive an equality in between uh, tau 1 and tau 2 given those two products to be uh, uh, equal, um, on the semantical level we cannot uh, derive the same because um, equality on top is going to collapse to equality of an empty type to an empty type, which trivially holds. Uh, so, uh, the way we proceeded, we constructed uh, a syntactic model of pro progress and preservation, and to deal with conversion rules, we use uh, used normalization of types to simplify it a bit. And after that, when we uh, tried to construct a semantic model, we noticed that it does not work due to the injectivity. So instead, what we uh, tried to do is to uh, make uh, the universe of semantic relations smaller uh, using some additional uh, gadgets that um, we uh, took from um, the normalization of types used for progress and preservation. Uh, so the idea of our model is to divide it into two stages. Uh, and the first stage is to is used to reason about equalities, while the second stage is uh, for usual interpretations um, of, uh, of types as some special sets of values. Um, so at the first stage, we define a uh, syntax of no normal and neutral forms for types, apply um, and B to it, and at the second stage, we reason only about uh, normalized uh, types at the ground uh, level. Um, so, for example, interpretation of uh, a constraint type would be, uh, we consider a uh, constraint type to be true if normal form of uh, tau is equal, syntactically equal to normal form 
of uh, sigma. Uh, now let's uh, uh, get back to uh, the interpretation at the second stage. Um, and now we interpret types at the ground level, um, and um, the way we can do that uh, to maintain information about the equalities um, of normal forms, we can uh, cannot uh, use uh, purely sem semantical relations uh, when we give interpretation to formal types any longer. So instead, we can quantify over uh, a subset of normal forms of um, our types and do a syntactic substitution. Uh, perform normalization one one more time uh, and uh, uh, require it to be our uh, uh, new set of uh, expressions. Um, and uh, for constraint types, uh, it is rather straightforward. We just require that um, values inhibited uh, uh, inhabiting um, interpretation of this type should be uh, syntactic pairs, where the second component is uh, 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 semantic uh, semantic level type. Uh, and um, constraint uh, holds, so normalized uh, forms of uh, types are uh, syntactically equal. Uh, and uh, but if we construct interpretation in this way, we are after a problem that we lose um, relational reasoning principles, because now we quantify over uh, really syntactical elements, and we cannot instantiate um, uh, move with an arbitrary uh, on a semantic relation and prove uh, interesting binary pro properties. Uh, so the way we can solve it is we can uh, notice that um, um, NB uh, works um, uh, 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 is uh, rather simply implemented for uh, uh, for uh, types at uh, but as a base kind. So what we can do is to extend our syntax of normal forms with an additional constructor for uh, uh, gr ground kinds by saying that uh, given an element of arbitrary type x, we return a neutral form um, <coughs> in an arbitrary uh, context and uh, it's a ground kind. Um, and uh, after that, uh, if we instantiate x with um, relations on syntactical values or with uh, relations on syntactic values, we finally can uh, construct um, a relational model. Uh, and one interesting aspect of this model is that uh, it's rather surprising that it works at all, because we balance in between syntactic reasoning, where we cannot reason uh, about relational properties, and um, on uh, um, and being too semantical when we cannot validate certain rules. Uh, <coughs> And uh, if uh, we validated this model by proven fundamental theorem uh, for both binary and unary cases, and uh, after that we constructed a few examples uh, that uh, um, use this model. So, for example, we related uh, uh, some simple programs based on JDTs to more classical um, programs that use uh, just lists, um, and it, it worked fi worked fine. So our main contributions of this work is um, a new calculus uh, to study JDTs, uh, a new interesting approach to combine syntactical and semantical reasoning by giving a model that uh, considers some non-trivial relationship, syntactic uh, relationship in between types. Um, we exhibited uh, this approach by giving two uh, models in this style, uh, fully mechanized everything in Coq. Um, and for the future work, we consider we are considering two. Um, uh, future directions. One direction is to consider some extensions for the calculus, like uh, references, concurrency, and so on. And preliminary results show that it, it is uh, uh, rather simple. Um, so, for example, if we want to add references, we just need to uh, add. <coughs> uh, we just need to, to add one uh, type constructor for references. And the, uh, the first stage is going to stay the same because uh, in, um, NB does not uh, change its behavior based on uh, uh, new constructors. And for the second stage, we just need to use a stronger logic. So, for example, we implemented an extension of the language um, with references, um, <coughs> uh, form formalized it, and gave a semantical model in Iris, and it also worked. Uh, and another future direction is to try to extend our relational approach to um, overall types quantified at higher kinds, because right now um, we extend our syntax of normal neutral forms only at the ground uh, kind, so we cannot 
uh, proof interesting binary problem, uh, properties if we um, uh, give uh, if we have a program that quantifies over something of kind star to star, for for example. Uh, thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to talk with them. And to start from tomorrow, I'm going to be at Popol, so we can also talk about this work in in person. Thank you, and sorry for the technical difficulties. Our session is technically over, so if you need to go around and get lunch, we understand. However, in recognition that lunch is an hour and a half, if you have a couple of questions, we can run a bit late and take them. There is one on Discord to start us off while you're all percolating. I do believe the speaker can hear the room, so we can ask questions in the room. So the question, can you hear me? Yep. yep. So the question from Discord is, I wonder why the for all, uh, for all exist mu were included in the constructors that we expect them to be injective. Uh, parenthesis, I don't expect them to be injective. <laughs> uh, so we want to verify it for more general, uh, uh, but we agree that um, for all and exist uh, are rather strangely behaved when they're injective. So, for example, if we remove uh, recursive types for, from our language and have, but still have injective for all, it's possible to uh, derive um, uh, uh, some kind of type false. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, in future, probably we're going to remove injectivity rules for for all and exist uh, in favor of uh, having a more fine-grained model for uh, treating uh, higher kinded parameters of for all and exist. We believe it might uh, solve some problems. Okay, there's one question from Neil, and I think that's going to be the last question. And so. <clears throat> Everyone remember that the speaker will be here tomorrow and that we can always ask more questions on Discord asynchronously. Uh, hello. Um, it is, in fact, on. Oh, okay. So uh, th this is really impressive work. Um, but what I wanted to ask you is that, uh, um, you know, we, we expect the injectivity to be admissible in order to make type inference work. But here you've internalized the the uh, injectivity um, and you know it was clearly very difficult to find a model where that worked so if you were designing a new language would you want to have internalized injectivity hmm well, probably not on the user level but um, in the core calculus so uh, I believe to be a good approach is to uh, uh, not have um, any internalized equality of types as a surface language, uh, but uh, uh, construct, uh, construct a set of constraints for uh, translation to the core la uh, language and uh, uh, reason about them as a core language, because I believe it's rather hard to program in a language where you need to explicitly reason about uh, injectivity and the rest of constraints. Right, let's thank the speaker one last time.